Welcome to a brand new episode of Back Pass with Ras. And with me, I've got young blood Joel. How are you doing, Joel? I'm doing good, Ras. How are you yeah. doing? I mean, it's been a good start to the week, but uh, in terms of transfer wise, it's a bit dry still. But hey, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the off season of football. I always, it's always the, the favorite part of my of football, whereby I know the transfers, the summer transfers coming in. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sticking my eyes in, onto like Twitter uh, and all the, the journalists that I follow and stuff. So yeah, looking forward to an interesting summer then. Okay, you've, you're of course talking about the present, but of course this show, Back Pass with Russ, is all about football from the past, from the 90s yeah. and the noughties. And I think the we had a long break from the last one we did about Real Madrid's Galacticos. We had two oh, yeah. part. We had a two-part special on that. You did the first part. I did the second part. Right. I think well done, Joel, on uh, helming the first part on your own solo <laughs> first first solo ride on back pass with Russ. Um, okay. <laughs> in your special way as well, you know, weaving in uh, new school football with the old school, mm-hmm. and uh, and then mine was all old school, of course. Yep. So this week we've got a special guest with us. I think um, those of you listening in would know that we also do a show for. The SPL Singapore Premier League club called Balestia Kalsa. Yep. And that show is called Back Pass X Balestia Kalsa. And we had this guest on that show before. Yep. And that show went on live and he was very popular. You know, a lot of questions came in for him, which were not related to the club that he works for at the at this present moment. So that's why we're gonna have this special episode where we're gonna talk about his Playing career is a long, long playing career from 1996 to 2014, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think it's best to... Still playing sometimes. <laughs> yeah, still, still playing, of course, still playing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and uh, let's uh, let's just call in the guest right now, Mr. Yazid Yassin. How are you doing, Yazid? I'm good. Doing great. How's everyone doing? We are very good. We are good. We are good. Thanks for joining us on the show. In your office as well, I must say. Yeah, hey, uh, in your office. So we got a uh, under-21 game going on. So yeah, I'm in the office now. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so without further ado, let me just start. Um, we're going to start from the beginning right now. Um, the Northern Clubs, you're synonymous with the Northern Clubs. We start from... Where you actually started from, Sembawang Rangers, which wasn't known as Sembawang Rangers before. So maybe you could speak to us and uh, tell us, uh, especially the listeners who, who missed out the episode we did with you on Backpass X Balestier, uh, on how you begin with Sembawang Rangers. Uh, okay, before the S League, right? Uh, they were the Premier League, and this team called Gibraltar Crescent. Hmm. Yeah. So when the Essex is formed, uh, Gibraltar and Sembawang, I think they merge, and that becomes Sembawang hmm. Rangers. So I was with the Gibraltar youth team, uh, and then from then, when the Essex start, they changed to Sembawang Rangers, and you know, uh, from there I stayed went into the Sembawang team. Okay, and so how old were you when you made your debut? I think sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's that, right? 16 years old. Joel, what were you doing when you were 16 years old? You're muted, Joel. Sorry. I was doing, I was preparing for my O levels, man. And <laughs> here we have Yazid was preparing to play football. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's difficult, no? <clears throat> I think back then, <clears throat> I think uh, there was really a hype for football. You know, a lot of people really wanted to play, you know, play a trades for football club. And the clubs were also willing to pay. And as well, and you know, the, the, the atmosphere for football back then was really good. You know, but, uh, mm. it was like positive vibes and going on. So, nothing surprising. Uh, you know, uh, a player of that caliber uh, of how Yazid uh, playing. You know? But then, remember when Yazid told us he, he didn't actually start playing as a keeper? You know, yeah, when he, when he was a field player. And then, and uh, one circumstances whereby he, uh, I think the team needed you, right, Yazid? Yeah, because I went for a trial, right? And then uh, there's no goalkeeper there. So, you know, that's the only place that I'm assured to play. So, I am assured to get. So, mm-hmm. I start playing there. And then, you know, from then on, I think I didn't look back, actually. 
Okay, that's cool. No, 16 years old as well. Coming back to that point, I think I remember 16 years old. I was in preparing for N levels, and uh, I represented Negeri Sembilan Sikh Union at that age. So that's that. But of course, not as high uh, profile as Yazid. Of course, uh, the yeah, boy. something. <laughs> yeah. And um, okay, Yazid, your time at Sabawang Rangers. I want you to share with us. We'll talk about your teammates later. But uh, in this segment, I just want to talk about your time spent at Sembawang Rangers. You had some. Uh, he had two spells at Sembawang Rangers. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, I got uh, two spells because uh, I'm doing my uh, NS in between. Uh, once I finish my NS, I come back to Sembawang Rangers. Yeah. So, what does the club mean to you? I think, to be honest, uh, that club is like family to me and to the players that was, you know, in the '96 uh, team. Because it was a gradual progression. Because I'm from Yishun, I I'm born there. You no, know, I was schooling there. So it's like a really good atmosphere. You know everyone. Everybody knows you there. And then the progression from Gibraltar to the small Rangers, right, uh, was quite smooth. Uh, because I'm uh, already part of the the club. And then you know, the thing is, uh, we we know. Almost everyone there is like a family atmosphere. I stay there, I live there. You know, the fans, uh, you meet them everywhere around the neighborhood. So that was really a, like a family team uh, for me. Okay, that's cool. And I think uh, when you, in 1996, sorry, do you make your debut in 96 itself or do you have to wait a few years before you made your debut? I made my debut in '96. I played uh, at, at the age of 16, huh? Yes. Wow, fantastic! I played. I also played as outfield once. Okay, in yes. in a as league game. Yes, in a league game. Uh, I think we were we got a lot of injuries, right? And I managed to squeeze in I think 10 minutes or so against Woodlands, our rival back then. As uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Sembawang Rangers, of course, played in uh, Yishun Stadium. And I, I remember in the early days of S League, every club had like an animal mascot. What was Sembawang's uh, animal mascot? Oh, we were the Stallions. The Stallions, right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I remember, uh, I think in the early days, 96 as well, I was outside the stadium trying to get a glimpse of the game in 96. I mean, in those days, the stadiums were full. Difficult to get tickets as well. I was outside Ishun Stadium and I was trying to get a glimpse of the game. So that was my earliest memory of the S League as he was known back then. So, Sembawang Rangers is like your family cup club. And then you just spoke about another team in the north, Woodlands Wellington, which you also <coughs> represented. And you, you have already uh, labeled them as your rivals back then. What was it like to uh, play for your rivals? You can... it, it was as though, you know, it's, it's the same like uh, Madrid uh, doing it like from Figo, hitting it from Madrid to Barca, kind of. The ultimate betrayal and and, <laughs> and traitor. Yazid, talk us through, man. How did you ever, you know, proceed from you know, going to Sambong Rangers and then hitting into Woodlands Wellington, which you said is your biggest rival? Like, how did that even happen? Uh, yeah, they were they were our biggest rival, you know. There's, every time... We play with Woodlands, right? Irregardless of the, the table or the standing, there's always a very good atmosphere. There's always this rivalry between these two northern clubs. Um, but lucky for me, lucky for me, right? When I went to Woodlands, you know, Samang Rangers is really closed down as a team. Oh. It, I don't, uh, honestly speaking, I don't think uh, if Samang was in the league, I would not have gone to Woodlands. At any point of time, if both of them are in the league at the same time. Okay, okay, okay. That's cool, man. Are you you represented Woodlands played for over hundred games for Woodlands as well, right? I think uh, I read read somewhere that you probably the second or third most appearances for Woodlands Wellington. Yeah, I have, uh, two spells there. Uh, yeah, and yeah, that's about yeah. But about yes, I just I just wanted to ask you this. I mean, uh. Uh, okay, leaving uh, leaving Sambang Rangers, I mean, yeah, they were closed down and then you you transfer yourself to Woodlands. Were there not any other clubs? Were Woodlands the only club that was available? Or, you know, there were actually other offers or, in table? Because 
despite Sembuang Rangers being close, I mean that that the affiliation with Sembuang and then bring yourself to Woodlands. I mean with the fans. I think back then fans were quite aggressive. You know they would they could have turned uh, not, uh, turned their backs away from you. So how did you handle all these? You no, know, were there other offers on the table or? This was the only offer, and then you took it, and then you you managed to convince the fans, and uh, you know you did not kiss the badge of the Woodlands Wellington. You just played the game. You know, no. What was your your ritual like? You know, for game days and stuff. Um, honestly, uh, when I was leaving Sembawang, right, uh, on the on the day I was actually going to meet a manager of another club. Okay. On my okay. yeah, on my way, yeah, on my way there, I got a phone call from Woodlands. Uh, the coach called me and then he said, oh, I want to meet you now. I said, I'm on the way doing something. He said, please meet, meet us now. So I made a quick detour uh, and then spoke to them. Uh, was very convinced of what they wanted to do, uh, what uh, they're going ahead. And then look, I made up my mind there and then to sign for them. Mm, okay. Which club was it that you're going to on the way to? Actually, I was going uh, on my way to to meet uh, SAF. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, well, SAF that, at that time also was a strong team. Yeah, SA, would that have been a better choice though? Thinking back right now, or I mean, you have nothing to lose now. But the thing is, thinking back right now, if you have just rejected the Woodlands call and then straight up win to SAF, would things have been any any different? Um. I'm not quite too sure though, because I was uh, going to meet them, uh, going to meet them for the first time. Uh, they had a foreign coach. I don't think that foreign coach uh, really knows me well. Whereas with Woodlands, right, uh, the coach wanted me, and then the the team manager wanted me. So I think the transition will be much easier for me, because I always feel that if if you're going to a team that the coaches or the, the team itself knows you, right, and it's much easier for you. Uh, to get into the team and then to build up from there. Whereas if you're going to a team that you know, maybe uh, the coach doesn't know you as much or he's mm-hmm. quite new to the league, then uh, it will be quite difficult. So I made my decision and I think I don't think I have any regrets doing that. Okay, which who's the coach at uh, Woodlands that convinced you? Yeah, the, the coach was actually Simon Clark back then. Yeah. Simon who again? Sorry. Uh, Simon Clark. Oh, Simon oh, Clark. Simon. Okay, okay. All right. Yeah. Say that again. Say that again, bro. Uh oh. Take out your mic. Your mic is having a problem. We said this one should have been live, huh? Yazi would have been happy. That one is in office. Right? office no, it just left. Oh. Oh. Seems like Arisa is getting United. Like it, like it. <laughs> He's a United fan, right? We are diehard United fans. Good. Okay, testing. Okay, testing. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. All right. Um. Yes, Yazid. I just want to ask you about the coaches you had at Wood Sembawang and Woodlands. Anything you got to say about coaching? I'm sure, in, especially in Sembawang, your formative years in the league, you must have learned a lot. Um, any shout outs to the coaches you've had? Yeah, I think for Sembawang, right? I think, like you said, when I was a youth there, uh, back then the coaches was very, it's all about disciplines, all about you know, Getting standards right, yeah. There's no way you can escape from them, uh. and I think I owe a lot to the coach there, uh, Mr. Yao Tian Bei, and also uh, Premjit Singh, also known as Bull, right? Uh, Bull, Actually, yeah. He's uh, Bull, yeah, yeah. He's the one that converted me into goal, trained me when I was young over there, and like I said, uh, back then I thought they were really very strict, but now I think. Uh, that was the best thing for me because you know, everything must be spot on, timing. You know, as a young player, you need to get the ball ready, everything ready. So, yeah, that's good. Uh. So, good grounding, good grounding and 
discipline that, we, that was put into you that you can bring forward to your game as well right now yeah i think because i had it uh, at a young age and then gradually it becomes a norm uh, mm. so throughout my career i think uh, i don't think i have any disciplinary issue and i always you know on time every time uh, but like i said it's all started from when i was very young okay and you join woodlands at a different time of your career so the coaches there how were they or what impact they had on your career Uh, when I was with Ruland, the coaching, uh, he's a player coach. Uh, he's a player coach. Okay. Uh, okay. So, and he's very professional, a very fit guy. So actually, we don't have any excuse, ah, uh, because if he runs, we don't run. You no, know, look bad on us. Um, which uh, brings a little bit a different uh, mentality, you know. Uh, where if we cannot outplay the team, we will outrun that team. Uh, oh, that's okay. A, a little bit. Uh, our success uh, for Woodland at that point of time. Hmm. Yes, it, <clears throat> just want to ask you, Yazid, the coaching methods back then, is it more vigorous now or back then was more vigorous? Because I know back then, right, uh, young players coming into the club are like men. These days, young players coming into the club are like boys. You cannot treat them like men. You know, you can't reprimand them like men. You know, uh, if I'm going to bring a, a quote said by Jose Moreno, Frank Lampard at 21 years of age was a man. These days, guys, boys at 21 are actually wretched. You know, that's what he said in one of his uh, uh, you know, recent interviews when they asked about his coaching methods and all. So back then, you know, how was it? Is it, it? Was it like vigorous, you know, very regimented compared to what is it now? I feel back then, uh, you know, it's very uh, like whatever the coach says goes, right? And they are quite very loud, uh, When they demand from you, it's not like, hey, please, ah, we need to do this. That is really, hey, you gotta get in there. I gotta put in a tackle. You gotta move. You know, and that's a big difference, ah, because nowadays, uh, I feel the same way. Sometimes, if you, you know, talk a little bit loud or you shout at kids or anything, then they tend to shy away from you. You know, whereas back then, you know. You need this uh, left, right, center. Yeah. Think, uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe it's also because of the times. You know, at that, at that part of time, you know, the type of coaching is all about all very loud, all very you know, specific. All the shouting and stuff is a norm. Whereas now, I think it's a toned down a bit, a bit more structured, a little bit more technical and things like that. Hmm. Is it? Is that how you you are talking to your players these days? That hey, please, ah, uh, please save this, ah, uh, please do this. <laughs> But it's interesting, huh? Yeah, I think uh, towards the end of my career, it's it's not always about being loud, being loud, being loud, uh, uh, telling people off and things like that. It's more the communication type, you know, specific. Hey, you write back, get your man and stuff. Whereas uh, in the early part, of the, oh, go up, take her, come, I things like that. So time change, player change. So the coaches also must change. Hmm. Okay, so moving on from the northern clubs, we go to two glamour clubs you represented: Home United and Geylang International. So Home United first; they were the first club, uh, first so-called glamour club you represented. You won some titles there as well. So, so speak to us about your time at Home United. Uh, Home United uh, to me was a, a very professional club, a very professional club. It is, you know, from. Comparing from Sembawang to Home United, right? Where Sembawang was very friendly, family atmosphere. Uh, then even with the players, but the moment you go to Home United, you know we got national players, uh, we got good foreigners, and it's all about being professional there. Everything that you do, is, you know, from start to finish, in terms of uh, the training, in terms of the coaching, is really, I mean, more professional level. Uh. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, and uh, talk to us about what you won at Home United. Do you remember what you won at Home United? Probably the most decorated player in S League uh, back then. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we won the first league for Home United there. Yep, we won the cup there. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just guide you. You won the you won the league. You all you won the league, and you were named Young Player of the Year at Home mm-hmm. United. And also the Singapore Cup twice, so that's what you have won 
uh, at home United. So I'm sure winning something is a difference, right? From uh, with all due respect to Sembawang Rangers, um, but you know when you play for a team that goes out there to win, the mentality is different. So do you do you learn? Do you pick up anything from that? Uh, from your times at home United. It was what exactly I meant, you know, the difference between the two teams, uh, you know, when Home United is uh, very professional, very result-driven, so everything that we do, uh, we want to get result every game. Whereas, like, considering when you play against Bawang, you know that some teams are much, much better than us. So, we don't actually go out to win the game, we try to go out not to lose the game. So, there's mm. two different things, right? Going out to win and going out to not lose the game, which... When you're playing for home United, you go out to win every game because we are fighting for titles uh, every single time. Mm. And um, is was it the same at Geylang International uh, United at that time? Geylang U- United was it the same? Uh, same with same with when we Geylang, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, it's a club with a lot of tradition. Uh, when we go there, you know, uh, of course, we want to try to maintain the level of, of the standards that the club. And then the trust that the club they have put on you to reach, uh, no, uh, to get back to where they are to reach certain heights. Hmm. And uh, 2009 RHB Singapore Cup that must have been a special final for you. You were man of the match. You helped Gelang win the cup as well. Uh, share with us your memories of that final. Uh, I think the memory of that final, like I said, uh, I've said many times. Uh, to a lot of people, there is a goalkeeper dream come true. You, know? mm. you always imagine, you know, going into a final, you know, uh, you know, playing against a very good team, making all the save, and then you know you scored against the run of play, and then at the last minute penalty, and you save that penalty, you won the you won the cup. You know you cannot have written it any better than that. Uh, you cannot even dream about it anything better than that to me, lah, because. I, so somewhere along the line, right? You imagine these things will happen, but on that particular day, I think everything happened. It was the perfect day. It was a perfect day. And uh, after that, any special treatment, or you, do you get any bonus, or the players brought you out, something like that? Did anything like that happen? Go kampung baru makan maggi goreng, I think. <laughs> yeah, no normal, normal celebration with the team after that. Uh, then with the family and stuff. Uh, of course, we got uh, quite a good bonus for winning the cup. Uh, mm. So, all is well. Okay, cool. So, yeah. from the Glamour Clubs, I just want to get your views on this. You already spoke about Sembawang Rangers closing down. Woodlands Wellington is also no longer around. What do you feel about these clubs not being around in the Singapore football scene? I think it's a loss, uh. Because you know, for both the club, for the non-northern club that I played for, right? Yeah. I think yeah. the support in that area is really immense. I think you know the supporters, everybody love the football there. Uh, regardless whether we are challenging for for things on top or you know we are in the mid-table team. Uh, I mean, it's very sad that because the both of the teams are not there. You know, even you know. The last few seasons that when you were playing, I think the fan support was superb, I tell you. Both Sabawang as well as when I was with Woodland. And uh, how do you think we can have these clubs back again in the in the Singapore football scene? What do you think needs to be done? What needs to be done, um, you know, somebody need to, you know, get a team ready in the northern side uh, to represent the north side of Singapore. I think mm. there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of potential there in terms of you know the community, you know, the kids. I think that is one area that I think they love the football there. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. come and give you the support there. So as the earlier that we can get a team back there, I think the more support we can get from the community on the northern side. Okay, that's nice. Uh, thanks for sharing. I, I hope as well, you know, the Northern Clubs can come back. I, it'd be fantastic if both come back. I think for starters, we'll do with one. I think if I'm not wrong, they are making a comeback though. 
But I think it's a joint venture though. If I'm not wrong, they're coming back as Woodlands Rangers or something. I think Venga was helming this. I'm not too sure. James Lin as well. Uh, it's in Facebook. I can't remember. I can't recall. Yazid, if you ever remember, please go and ask uh, Darwin or something. Because I remember seeing Facebook posts of uh, you know, something with Woodlands and then Hussein was texting and James and Venga was all there. So I think there's something going on. Uh, could be a joint venture you know, to bring the club back you know, from starting to playing from IWL and then starting to play SFL and then probably the, the promotion back to uh, SPL. I think there are some plans in place. Uh, I'm not too sure are they going to be participating in this year's IWL. But, uh, yeah, it remains to be seen. But I think, yeah, that's it. They, are, they, they could be making an entrance. It could be, uh, I don't know, it could be this year or next year. But, yeah, I think in the next 10 years, we should be seeing... Uh, a, a one Woodlands Rangers in SPL soon. But like I said, uh, if there's something uh, from the club, I think it'll be good. They need to start somewhere, right? Whether IWL, SFL or whatnot, uh, they must be a starting point. And then from there, we can progress and see. Because like I said, I think, I think the support that, that they're going to get from the fans over there, they'll be missing football, right? Or missing a team to support in the S League will be enormous. Uh. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, yes. Yeah, so, I've got a question from a fan. Um, Yazid, we, we open up the a sort of a comment section for fans to ask you questions. So, this one question is, why do you think is the reason that despite a great club career spanning two decades, you only managed to get kept once at international level? So, this question has been asked by Elvin Riar. Uh, okay, I think to be fair, I think the keepers in the national team at that time was better than me, right? Yeah, and it's very difficult to break into the national team, uh, even though you need to be very consistent playing. But uh, the first choice keeper also need to have a deep inform for you to have a look in the national team. Mm. Yeah, but who were the keepers, keepers at that time? At the time, it was uh, Rizal, yeah, mm. which uh, was a very good, really, really good goalkeeper. And then subsequently, there's Lionel, there's Sharil, and Hassan. I mean, you know, to be fair to them, they are great goalkeepers. They deserve whatever uh, the caps that they're playing. Uh, I think I got no issues saying that they are better than me. So, I mean, the goalkeeper deserve it. Uh, so, fair enough. It's one of okay. those. Okay. All right, so moving on now to teammates and opponents. Um, I'll ask you another question by a fan. Name three strikers you hated to face in the S-League because they always scored against you. So this is from Rohaizat Talib. I don't like my... I don't like my good friend, uh, Indra. He always seems to score against me. I don't like... Uh, you know, in a good way, huh? I don't like... You know, this uh, Nicodin Boucher. He, okay. He, okay. Yeah, Nico. He, uh, he's, he's a monster. And also, there's also Mirko. These are the three strikers that you know, I hate to face uh, because they are, they, are, they are special. Right? I mean, they are top, top strikers and they always say, scores against you. Okay. My, my question is, um, the next thing I want to know from you is that in terms of dressing room and atmosphere, which were the best clubs that you were at? In terms of <laughs> He's putting room? on a sport, man. <laughs> right, like I said again, uh, nothing to hide. I think in terms of like you know, like uh, family, uh, in terms of close knit uh, camaraderie, right? I think the Sembawang team was uh, was on top, uh, you know? mm. uh, Nothing can beat them. And then of course you say that's the home United where it's so professional there. Uh, so, there are two different things like I said. Uh, means uh, it's lucky that I managed to experience both. Uh. Okay. And any best friends you have in uh, football? Like from your playing days? Most of, uh, most of my super good friends are all the goalkeepers. Uh, with, okay. Okay. Yeah. The Riza Rahman and also Ahmad. Uh, uh, good friends uh, because we play in the same position uh, so we got a lot of things to talk about uh, we share the same passion 
Uh, you also talk the same language. Uh, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Yazid, do you guys actually like share tactics uh, or like, you know, with each other? I know some like some games, if you go, if you think that you guys are going to meet with each other, I just say next week, next Saturday, you're going to play playing against your fellow uh, custodian. All right, he's going to be in goal and stuff. Now, will he be telling you, hey, you know, my striker will, 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 will shoot like this? And then will you be saying, hey, my striker will shoot like this? You know, in the joy of, you know, being friends and all this. Because I know the rivalry is not that huge, you know, whereby, you know, I'm not going to tell you anything, you know, after a cup of coffee, I'm leaving, you know, like, but you guys actually, like, talk to each other. It's like, hey, my striker cannot make it. Like, you know, that kind of, that kind of speech, does it happen? Does it happen? Uh, actually, no, I think. Uh, somehow rather, you know, you know, we are meeting each other in the next week or the next game, right? They tend to be uh, simmer down of uh, less communication and most probably will be like, okay, good luck uh, for your next game. Well, we know we're going to meeting each other. And then after the game, then all, you know, all the fun things starts to come back. Uh. I think it's a little bit of a professional courtesy also, I think, that we all have rather than talk about our teammates or giving away tactics to the other team. I think we just... Pretty interesting, huh? All right, man. Rust, go ahead. Yeah, I, I found that interesting as well. I mean, I, I would expect that also. I don't think they would actually be sharing that uh, tricks. Okay, about foreign players that you've played with, who are some of the for best foreign players that you've played with? I think there's a lot of foreign players that... Uh, I've played with or against, but I think uh, one that need to be mentioned is I think from again from my early days, uh, Taiwan Sipan, mm. the Thai national team. Uh, I think such a great role model, you know, such a great role model in terms of when I was a young player or when that team was very young, right? You know, he was such a star. He's such a star, and he behaved. So professional, he comes in early, does his, you know, gym work. Uh, when we come, we come, hey, we really take care. He was every time early. Uh, and then that drops into the team or the younger players. and say, oh, this is what I need to do to do to be as good as him. Because like I said, he was a really superstar back then. And he's, there's no air in him, you know. He's so humble. He treats everyone the same. Yeah. Can ask you to join his gym work together and as a young player, you know, you know, it really, oh my god, uh, this superstar player yeah, asked me to join him with the gym work before the session and then uh, that is one of the players that I think need to be mentioned uh, because like I said, first impression, right, you know, mm. you got a player like this, so humble, so good and so disciplined at that time, it drops uh, to all the youth players there was at the Smolong back then. Okay, and about local players, which are... Yes. Can you hear? Yep. Okay, yeah, I was talking about local players. Who are some of the best local players you have played with and against? Some of the best, I think, you know, uh, played with, you know, Subramani, Aidy Iskandar. I think they were really good, you know, top, top defenders, you know, and then Again, we just Rudy Kairon hmm. was a national player back then. Well, he was so good with the younger players, yeah. you know, always you know, giving us support, you know, both on and off the field. Uh, you know, again, these are the players that you, know, you look up to, and when you look back, uh, they are the players that you know helps you shape the way you want to treat the younger kids when you grow, when you grow up, or when you are. An established professional. Mm. Okay, that, that is good, man. I I remember these guys. Um, okay, foreign players. You only spoke about Tawan Sripan, of course. Uh, I know, I know him. Was a really good player, central midfielder. Um, but any other foreign players that you maybe come to mind that you want to mention? A shout out. Like I said, you know, there's there's a lot of good foreigners. Yeah? Like Nico, and then there's Perez, and then Ekma have uh, become naturalized, you know, Ragus, and these are all, you know, I think they are, they are really special. Yeah. Mm. They, they, they make a difference and they are uh, above the local level. That's, okay. what we, that's what we look at as a foreigner, they must be better than the 
the local. Yeah. And also when the time you join, I mean, sorry, when the time Aslik started, it was also quite near the euphoria of the Malaysia Cup winning days, the 1994 Malaysia Cup winning team. Then a lot of those players were also playing the Aslik. What was it like playing with them and against them? Yeah, like I said, you know, they were like cult heroes, right? Back then. Yeah. yeah, and then they were split into teams. Uh, every team, you know, like... Yeah, every team had a few. Yeah, well, we got uh, Stefan Nung, we got Nazri, uh, we got Rudy Kairon. Uh, you know, you always want to, you know, you're very excited. You know, how is it like this and that? And lucky for me, as like I said, uh, those players, you know, they are a positive, a very positive people. Like even though you know they are like the star players, there, uh, mm. you know, they help the younger ones. Uh, they don't really put us down or anything. It's always about learning, and they are always willing to share, which I really appreciate. Uh. Okay, and have you ever faced a one-on-one with Fundy? <laughs> yeah. Actually, there's a there's a funny story. Uh, me and Fundy, you know, when I was playing, and he was uh, with with SF. Okay. It was a corner. It was a corner. And then he was he was coming towards me. And he was smiling and said, "Hey, how's it?" Hey. And it was oh, man, Fundy's talking to me. Yeah, and yeah. Then, I understand. And then the next one in front of me, he came and scored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I always remember that that. Uh, that incident, uh, uh, thinking back, it is a uh, uh, maybe he's talking to me because he wanted to score, or just distract me or something. Yeah, you want to distract you. By the way, uh, there was a really nice memory uh, which I can tell people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got another question from a fan. This guy, I know him, and he's one of the one of Sembawang Rangers diehard fans. You could say so. He has asked you to name your best 11 you have played with, including yourself in goal. So this is from Faisal Basse. Okay, uh, the 11 that I... Okay, it would be me in goal, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I think uh, my defender, I have three defender. Uh, Subramani. Yeah, Subramani. Mm-hmm. Uh, Niwet, the Thai national player. And Razif, Razif Mahmoud. That's my three defender. Then my midfielder, I have uh, Latif. I have, Latif. Hmm. Uh, I have Tawan Sripan. I have No Ali there too. And Pak Tewan. You have put No Ali in no centre midfield. Because No Ali can play different positions. So there is no issue wherever that he plays. Hmm. Yeah. Of course, my three striker, uh, Indra, Alam Shah. And Nikodem. Who again? Sorry, the last name? Uh, last name? Uh, Nikodem. Uh, oh, okay. Nikodem. Yeah, the striker. Yeah. Are we missing okay. one player in midfield? No, 3 4 3 one, he said. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay yeah. Okay, yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is how Ballester is playing right now, so they won't go against it. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, man. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. So, Faisal, I hope you've heard that I, he asked this question in fact in the during our live show oh uh, yeah yeah he, so he, so this one's finally got it out there finally he's heard it from the man himself mr yazid yasin so yeah thanks a lot for sharing i think the last one i'm going to ask will be on the crowd what a great atmosphere it used to be right in the stadiums yeah, yeah i think in the early days it was what, almost every game is uh Pack a full house. Uh, the atmosphere was uh, so good, uh, and then it dwindles a bit. You know, but now I think slowly, uh, slowly improving. Uh, the pandemic doesn't help, but hopefully, you know, we can get all the crowd back in to support the team. Hmm. And okay, on the crowds as well, they were loud. I know they were loud. They were, you, as you mentioned, stadiums were full. Um, they probably could have. There were probably lesser restrictions back then, right? They could bring whatever musical instruments onto the in the stands. Is that right? 
Yeah, I think that's right. I think they can they bring banners, they bring uh, drums, they bring everything. I think uh, less restriction, uh, nearer to the fans also. Yeah, at that point, on that point, nearer to the fans. Have you ever been felt threatened by the fans? Nah, I don't think. I think uh, I think I've been nice. You know, I think even my rivals. I don't think they hit me. You know, uh, I'm quite alright with fans from uh, whichever team. Uh, there's no bad blood or anything. Of okay. Course, okay. Read here and there, but uh, I think. All right. All right. All right. Cool. All right. Joel, hi Said. How are you? <laughs> it's okay, Azmi. It's alright. <laughs> I do. Okay, Joel, your your turn now. Your questions. Yeah, man. Before I even go there, man, uh, Yazid, thank you so much for you know leading up in the past. I uh, you know such beautiful memories. You know, walking down the memory lane. Is there any memories you had with uh, Sundram though? Hmm. Sundram. Uh, no, no. Uh, I don't really play. It. I think I played against him at National Stadium. Uh, that was one of the game that. Uh, that you know, I was man of the match, and I was saving almost everything that Sundram and Gang uh, put, uh, which is also one of the highlight of my career. Uh. Which team was that uh, Sundram played for? Jurong FC. No, that time he was playing for the Woodland Wellington, and I was playing for Sumawang. Again, oh. right the National Stadium. Yep. What game was that then? You played in uh, in the National Stadium. Was it a cup final or a? Or a semi-final or something. Yeah, it's a league game. Oh, league game. Yeah, because uh, I think in the early part there's two league. You know, there's the they split into two, two leagues. Yeah, and it was a league game that we managed to play at the National Stadium. Yep. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Just a bonus though. Uh, I know Said Azmi was pretty much young at the point of time, but uh, did you play against him or no same team or? He was came coming into the academy and then you're bullying him. Any sort of memories of that? Uh, he was actually my teammates uh, when we were at Sembawang. Yeah. Oh, wow. The only wow. memory, you know, he takes a penalty in a weird way. Maybe if you guys have seen him take a penalty, he usually no. runs no. this some ass kind of thing and then start to shoot the <laughs> ball. Which is, I don't know, maybe that's his style, but that was. Oh, I score! Okay. He said it. <laughs> Yeah, he scored. But there was, I must there see was, this, man. Yeah. I, I think the next time when we come over to, to, to Paya, I think we're going to ask uh, Azmi to, to try that, man. Try that, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and then, yeah, you'll find it really odd. Lucky he scored. If he doesn't, then, you know, he'll be the joke of the town, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, it's hilarious, man. Thank you so much, Yazid. Yeah, so we, we, we walked through memory lane, you know, back then of your past of uh, football of you playing and then uh, you know how was football like back then and now we are going to hit the present day which is why i'm here because russ always talks about the olden days and i always talked about the modern day so um we know i've talked too much uh we know that you're representing uh commonwealth cosmos uh for the sfl2 though so uh you know um a lot of people i think would say this is like a, a fall from grace but uh, in terms of football wise, nothing is a fall from grace. You yeah. B- before that, Joel, let me just yeah. uh, share as well. SFL two stands for Singapore Football, football League. League two. Yes. Yeah. So right. that's like yeah. uh, the below of uh, uh, yeah a step and below then, than the professional league called the Singapore Premier League. Yeah. So just a little yeah. bit of that. You no, know, it started off with Island Wide League, that's the IWL, and then you go up to SFL two Singapore Football League, and then you go up to SFL. One, which is uh, Singapore Football League Division One, and then a uh, they're still in planning. Uh, I think they are always planning. <laughs> I don't want to say it, why, but uh, yeah, it's in the plan. Uh, it's in the motion to actually have the SFL One Division One clubs to actually have a, a promotion into SPL. But yeah, that is in works. But yeah, yes, it back to this Commonwealth Cosmos Football Club. You know, a lot of people say you no, know, it's always a fall from grace. But in terms of football wise. The fact that you get to play football on a weekly basis right now, you know, I think games are every Saturday or no, every Sunday. SFL is always on, on Sundays, you know. And uh, you know, what are your thoughts on that? You no, know, how do you feel playing SFL? And with, with, with your some of them, I, I think could be your, your former teammates, could be your friends as well. How do you? What are your thoughts on that? Um, 
Okay, I mean, football is football. Lah. Wherever you play, right? Uh, it's just same eleven v eleven with all the players. Um, I don't, I don't think it's a step down. And the only reason why I'm playing is I'm, I'm, I'm actually helping out a friend. Yeah, the friend was my coach. Yeah, they needed a goalkeeper. So uh, yeah, so that's it. That's why I you know, come back and play. Yeah. Russ, there's a fun fact, you know. It's not that easy to just come back to play. You know why? There is a fitness test he needs to pass. He needs to actually pass off a 2.4 for 14 minutes. Yeah, and this guy is fit, man. I think probably he hit that 14 minutes mark. Did you pass? Like, What was the timing, though, Yazid? My timing was, I think, 14, 14 plus. Yeah. Oh, man. Russ, can you, can you hit 14 for 2.4? I can't even run now. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's interesting, man. All right, man. Uh, Yazid, coming to the next one. Uh, you know, I'm just going to go a little bit hard on this, whereby uh, you know there are a lot of talks of you know having the SFL teams to you know actually participate in SPL, but you no, know, uh, a lot that comes to you no know, financial fair play, uh, the quality of the players, the qualification of the managers and the coaches. So you know, in that aspect, do you think? The teams playing in SFL and SFL 1 and 2 have got what it takes to be playing in the SPL. Uh, the owner's opinion, right? Uh, I've played, uh, now currently playing in SFL 2. I've played in the previously known as NFL Division 1 as well as the Division 2, right? Uh, I don't think, I, I really don't think that the teams are ready at the moment, you know, to get playing into the uh, Singapore Premier League uh, because simple fact is you know the level of fitness right yeah I think that's that's the huge gap I will tell you right now even the better team that is in the uh, SFL one they'll probably they probably can match to a certain level but then when it comes to, in terms of the quality where the SPL team with the foreigners in terms of fitness I, I don't think they'll be able to match that also on the SFL, he has he has got, got some bad press as well for being a bit rowdy and uh, rough on the ages. We've seen some incidences as well over the years. Um, do you think it's a fair reflection or if it's not a fair reflection and it's if these kind of things really happen, do you think something more needs to be done to eradicate all this uh, nonsense, I would say? Um... I think four or five years back uh, when I was playing, right? I think it's uh, in general it's getting better, you know, because you know there are teams that you know there are players that sometimes they are not uh, what you say they're not dirty players, but sometimes they are just slow. Hmm. See, and then there are players that have played that game before, you know you know trying to you know exert themselves into the team uh, but in general like i said maybe 10 years back that is the case there's a lot of i think you can hear there's a lot of fights between the teams and stuff but i think the league itself have done well to clamp down on this I mean like banning the players you know finding the clubs and that i think that should be the way because uh, for football to move on right uh, we should not be having all this issue, you know, in terms of fights yes, yes. every weekend and uh, NFL or SFL uh, uh, fights here and there. Whatever that you talk about needs to be about football or this team played well. Uh, no, this player was really outstanding and stuff. Rather than you know, oh, there was a big fight there. Everybody got excited. Hey, shall we go to the match and see this fight? You know, now you're going for the wrong reason. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But like I said, I think uh, the past few years, I think. Uh, there's less and less of this type of uh, you know, incidents and I think so far it's getting better uh, to me. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think it's true because five years ago, uh, which was called NFL back then, was really bad. You know, there were like, fights every game and people would just love to go there. But there were not much media coverage back then. Five years on, right now, 2022, which is called the Singapore Football League, there is media coverage. There is a lot of uh, you know, Instagram pages coming in. I think, Russ, one of your pages also has been reporting for uh, some of the futsal, 
it's happening as well. And you know, for especially SFL, I've seen like personally, I've seen three Instagram pages. Like even myself, I'm like literally following one of the pages because I need to follow for obvious reasons, <laughs> which I'll tell you later. That's it. And uh, yeah, so that that with that being said, you know, I think the, the the disciplinary matters has really improved the quality of football. Uh, I think before COVID was better. Right now, I think because after COVID, the players are still struggling in fitness, very rusty in terms of technical football and stuff. So they are getting there. But I, I think it, it's going to be an interesting SFL league, though. That I, I wish you all the best, Yazid. But I'm going to put you on the spot. I know you're playing in the League 2. But uh, I would love to know your predictions for who will be the champions of SFL League Division 2. Who who will be the champion? Uh, yeah. I'll, be on, I'll be honest with you, right? Uh, I haven't seen all the teams play. I have teams play. But I think the front runners for the SFL 2 should be, you know, the likes of Bishan Bucks, they are a good, decent team. And of course, uh, Jungfrau. Uh, and also, not to mention the police team. It's super fit, I tell you. Yeah. yeah. All right, interesting. Yeah, man. So speaking of Jungfrau, they are really good, man. Ras, go ahead. Police essay, right? Yeah, police essay. Mm, okay. Yeah, so, uh, Joel, any more questions for... One Yazid? last question. Okay, go ahead. Before, before we wrap this up. Yazid... The champion that you think that you will be in the SFL League One, you need to you need to think twice before you answer this, huh? All right, I'll give you an obvious reason why. Could it be this? Uh, okay, I think for the SFL again, uh, I cannot give you an accurate description or an accurate okay, okay. teams because uh, I haven't watched. I watch a few, not all, but I think PV, of course, is one of the favorites, you know, and then you got the likes of Warwick, where you have a lot of SD uh, players, yep. know, yep. players playing over there, but I think you need to look at, uh, you know, this Bell State, uh, Singapore Kalsa. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're, 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 they're a decent team, you know, I think, you know, personally, I feel uh, you take out all the names, right? You just look at them. I think they are a very good team. They one of whether they can sustain it for the rest of the season, uh, that is for us to see. Yeah. But I think great, these are the great, teams. great prediction, Jadi. Thank you. Yep, Skalsa and one more GFA, uh, West Sporting West League. They are a surprise package, man. But thank you, Yazid. I uh, know, and uh, I wish you all the best for the SFL League too. I hope Cosmos do really well in the league, man. And keep yourself safe, keep yourself injury free, so that me, myself, Ras. And Kel can see you on weekends for football at Topai Stadium. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I mean, enjoy yourselves, enjoy the game, enjoy yourselves at the game, and keep yourself safe and fit. Uh, I'm sure you you you're just doing this for fitness sake as well as just for the joy of sport of playing football. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure on that because you've had a long career. You ended in 2014, is that right? Yes. True. Yeah, so yeah. you know, sp spending two decades, it's a long, long career. They always say goalkeepers have a long career. You know, they always have a longer career than outfield players. So you are the epitome of that. Um, before I end, Yazid, something on uh, just getting your thoughts on on international football uh, from what you've seen as a kid, teenager, players that you have uh, admired in your position. Who who are some of the players that you've admired? As a goalkeeper from international football, uh, from international football, I think uh, I'm. I prefer you know uh, the likes of uh, this time was the Italian goalkeeper Zenga. Zenga, uh, Walter Zenga, Zenga, yeah. Zenga, Zenga, and then gradually it turns to you know Campos, just for the obvious reason. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because right? uh, that was uh, one of the thing that you know inspired me you know because i think we are about the same height 17 171 and he's playing in world cup at that height so there's no excuse for me to say oh no my height is uh, hindering whatever progress that i am as a goalkeeper and then later part i think we like, bartes yeah. all the keepers are quite you know 
similar similar the way that I play similar in height yeah in this is the thing. oh my god this is deja vu you know why whenever I look at Yazid right it always brings me back to memories of Fabian Bates it always for some reason I don't know why whenever I look at him whenever I come to Topayo office when I look at him I'll be just like looking him up and down and be like he reminds me of someone and then it's like Fabian Bates and you know I I think I think uh, you follow my career right there will be a point of time that you know i cut off my sleeve make it short hey bates oh okay okay oh, cool okay okay cool you didn't get a hoge campo style jersey though <laughs> colorful ones <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i can pull that off uh, you know but i said bates no trend setters mm-hmm. at that time all the goalkeepers were long sleeve Only him is going short. Only him, yeah. yeah. Cherry yeah. goalkeeper yeah. using doing the same thing. So, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this year is the year of the World Cup. Um, which are some of the best World Cups you've watched? Some of the best World Cup, I think, the one in Korea. Yeah. Okay. Just okay. Because I think, yeah, it was one of the first time. In the World Cup, right? That uh, Asian country is doing very well, and went that far. So that's interesting, uh, and hopefully, this coming World Cup will be even better. Uh. Mm. I don't think there's any favorites due to the pandemic and stuff, and to where they were playing. So Netherlands. <laughs> Netherlands. Do you have a favorite team when when it comes to World Cups? Do you have a favorite country that you support? I have a favorite country, but unfortunately, that country didn't make it in the World Cup. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Is wait, it wait. Italy? Is it Italy? Italy? Yes, it's. it's, it's oh Italy. my oh, God! God. <laughs> You're my friend, oh, man. God, man. What an episode is this, guys? What a beautiful episode, and where we got to find out that Yazid is actually an Italian fan, same with Ras himself. My oh. God! <laughs> if you know, Rob, you know the Baggios, you no, know, the Palucas. Yeah, they were yeah. like you know, crazy true. and stuff. Yeah, okay, guys, Anabaru, guys. See? yeah. I'm taking my leave. I will leave. Uh, you guys can enjoy the Baggios, the what not and all. <laughs> yeah, 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 correct. Yeah, That correct. those were the days, right, for Italy, the national team. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, hopefully, yeah, of course. Hopefully. We've won the Euros and uh, hopefully we'll come back strong. Italy never dies, so. Okay, thanks a lot, yeah, Yazid, for speaking to us um, in the office as well. You know that's really nice of you to take the time out to speak to us and answer some questions by your fans. Yep. Anything you want to say to your fans or fans of uh, I one of the northern clubs that are no no longer around? I know they are still pretty active. Lee supporting the club and uh, wearing the colours of the respective clubs, Sembawang Rangers and Woodlands Wellington. Any message for them? Uh, I really hope that uh, there will be another club uh, that's emerging in the northern side. And when that happens, I want all of them to you know to come together and support that club, like what they have to support the Sembawang before and then at Woodland. Uh, hopefully, those fans, you know, will come back to the stadium. Uh, will come back and support the clubs that's in that area because I, I I really feel that's the area that you know there's so much support from the community from the fans and uh, just hopefully like I said you know might not happen now might not happen one two years but when it comes I think the fans will be there. All right, nice. Thanks a lot, Yazid, for sharing your thoughts and memories as well. Uh, one last thing, got to share with you. I actually we wanted to have. Something from No Ali for you, but unfortunately he's not feeling well, so couldn't get a video message from No Ali. Wishing him the best of health. In fact, his team is playing now as we speak. Um, not sure if he's there, but uh, yeah, wishing him the best of health. Anyways, uh, Yazid, thanks a lot once again. It's been a pleasure and an honor to speak to you. Yes, sir. We'll see you at the stadium soon. Joel, signing out. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye.